And now, the mythology of mint. Mint actually gets its name from the Greek goddess Mintha. Now she was a wood nymph and a guardian of the river Cocytus. This story starts off as many Greek myths do. Hades, our favorite lord of the underworld. Bubba, name is Hades, lord of the dead. Hi, how you doing? He ends up having a thing for Mintha. Is it Mint, Mintha, or Minthe? We're just gonna stick with Mintha for now. And fortunately, unlike some scary Greek myths out there, she has a thing for him too. Unluckily for them both, Hades is already married to Persephone at this point. And if you remember that myth at all, Hades went through quite a bit of trouble to actually get her to live with him in the underworld. Awkward. Now according to some accounts, Mintha gets just a bit too cocky and brags to some of her fellow wood nymphs about Hades. Oh yeah, Hades? Oh, he totally loves me more than Persephone. I mean, can you blame him? Well, of course, Persephone is royally pissed off at this point, but does she confront Hades? Yeah, no. She finds Mintha and confronts her instead. Here's where things get a touch skewed on the history, because there are several different accounts as to what happened. Man, eyewitnesses, so unreliable. The first version is definitely the more brutal and exciting one. Persephone finds Mintha and has a respectful chat over tea, where the two women discuss their feelings and the dilemma they are faced with. <laughs> yeah! That's so not what happens. In a rage, Persephone tries to kill Mintha by knocking her ass down and pummeling her so hard that she destroys her in a freaking bloody massacre pulp! Eee! Unfortunately, or maybe it's fortunately, Mintha doesn't die and actually gets transformed into the plant Mint. But Persephone doesn't care, she just keeps going back and trying to pummel her again and again and again until Hades finally stops her. Oh, that's right, baby. Don't mess with Persephone. In version two of this tale, Persephone puts a spell on Mintha, which turns her into a plant, so everyone can trample on her. Which I suppose in a way could be considered even more brutal. In version 3, Persephone just has Mintha dismembered and scattered across the hills of Pylos. Version 4 is similar to version 1, but instead of Persephone pummeling Mintha so hard that it turns her into mint, Persephone pummels Mintha so hard that she turns her into dust. It is Hades who then turns Mintha into the mint plant. Either way, the end result is the same. Hades finds the brutalized Mintha, and unfortunately, because of the power of Persephone's magical mashing of Mintha, he can't bring her back. And so, in order to stop Persephone in her endless berserker rage, Hades puts a spell on Mintha that makes her smell so fantastic that she will never be taken for granted again by anyone who might come across her minty awesomeness. Whew. How about a happy story? I've got just the one for you. Two strangers were visiting a village. But as often happens in these tales, they were greeted by a bunch of people with some seriously bad attitudes. I mean, nobody would help them out. Luckily, an old married couple named Philemon and Bacchus offered a meal to these poor hapless strangers. Before the meal began, the couple rubbed the table with mint to give it a nice, clean, and fresh scent. After receiving this great kindness, the lowly strangers revealed themselves to be the mighty Zeus and his messenger, Hermes. The gods then proceeded to turn this couple's small home into a nice, big, sexy temple. And thereafter, mint became known as a symbol of hospitality throughout Greece. Hooray! Mint has long been associated with the planet Venus, the astrological sign Aquarius, and the element of air. Which is partially why it's associated with love spells and protection spells. One of which is the Magus by Francis Barrett, who recommends a perfume of calamint, peony, mint, and palma Christi to drive away evil spirits and vain imaginations. It was also seen as a cure for thantophobia, which is the fear of death, and can help you recover from hydrophobia, the fear of water. It was also believed to have the power to scatter snakes, and the Greeks even believed it could help protect you against sea serpents. In English folklore, finding a flowering mint plant on Midsummer's Day would bring you eternal happiness. According to Italian folklore, peppermint helped protect children from sickness and silkworms from evil spirits. Glad we're protecting the silkworms. 
There are actually a lot of stories out there about how peppermint can help fend off negative energies. One way of achieving this is to rub the leaves on household items, floors, and the corners of your home's walls. You can also burn the leaves first, then allow the smoke to take effect before rubbing the leaves in. You can also create a jar of protection by adding mint to a little rainwater or seawater. Have you just had a breakup or maybe an argument with someone? Then wash your floors with mint to encourage some calm and harmonious energy. Or you can hang some mint over your doorway to avoid those nasty arguments in the first place. Just saying. Having trouble sleeping? Sniffing peppermint before bed was believed to help you fall asleep. But if you're looking for a more eventful night's sleep, then you should probably put some peppermint under your pillow, as this can help you see the future in your dreams. But if all those visions of your future are keeping you awake, putting spearmint under your pillow can protect you from bad dreams and evil forces while sleeping. Bad luck got you down. Mint is also really good at breaking bad streaks, overcoming obstacles, and avoiding the trickery of other people. For the best results, drink some mint tea and carry some in your shoe or pocket. Why the shoe? Well, I'll tell you. I don't know. Maybe somebody had some bad foot odor? Mint can also increase your personal strength and give you the fortitude and guts to overcome any difficulties or restrictions caused either by yourself or other people. Want to keep your money flowing smoothly? Then keep that leafy green in with your paper green. Or is it that you're having trouble attracting customers to your business? Just burn mint as an incense in your place of business. And boom, problem solved. But I know what you really want. You want to attract some more loving in your life, don't you? Well, then you need a mint bath. Taking a mint bath can not only attract love and beauty into your life, but it'll bring a little extra luck as well. And finally, if you're feeling a little introspective and really need to work on your personal growth, then here's what you need to do. Get a small piece of paper and write your name on it, and then hang it on a sturdy stalk of your mint plant. Then grab a seat, scooch on up to your mint plant, and have a nice heart-to-heart -heart with it. You're going to want to ask your mint plant to help you grow in personal strength as it grows in your house. So hey there, mint. Uh, yeah, we've been friends a long time, you know, and... Uh, Man, I've been struggling a lot lately, you know? I, my luck hasn't been that good. Do you think you could help me out with it? I mean, I can get you lots of good soil, maybe a little extra water and some uh, nutrients. Is that cool? Sound good? Excellent. We have an accord. Let the world domination begin! <laughs> I mean, uh, personal growth. Let, let, let the personal growth begin. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see some more videos like this, then please watch the history of mint or even the mythology of basil. Have you heard about any odd myths about how mint is used that you didn't hear today? Please let me know in the comments section down below. Until next time, you guys take care of each other and please put a little mint on your pillow and have some nice prophetic minty dreams.